Well, thank you very, very much. It's a pleasure to be here, a pleasure to be back. If you're watching this live, happy Groundhog Day. Uh, and the groundhogs are saying, I'm a varmint, not a meter man, but uh, there's a couple people posting. Happy Palindrome Day. Everybody knows that? You know, it's 02022020, first time in 909 years. I've just been reading about this. Would ask me yesterday, I wouldn't have known about it, but I think we've got to wait another 111 years, and I think all of us will be there, but we've got to wait another 111 years for that. And happy Super Bowl Day, though I really don't have much of an opinion on that. Uh, finally, happy Let's Talk Cholesterol Day, because it's an important topic. Uh, it should be resolved. It shouldn't be necessary to review, both for you very smart people and broader audience, uh, the role of cholesterol in health and disease. You know, many things in life aren't black and white. Cholesterol isn't bad. Cholesterol isn't good. Uh, too much of some things uh, can be dangerous from, uh, you know, simple stuff like breathing too, uh, drinking too much water or alcohol to uh, cholesterol. It's good for you, but you don't need too much of it. So let's go through the science. I don't know how exactly Steve talked me into this topic. It's a joyful topic, it's an important topic for every one of us, but I've never given this talk previously, so and there is a little effort to put together a brand new talk, but I like that actually. Uh, it's an educational process for me and others. Uh, I am from Detroit. I think the bio may have said that. I do have an active practice. Uh, this is my 43rd year being plant diets. I don't call it plant-based, plant diets. So I thank the very bad cafeteria in Ann Arbor at the University of Michigan for pushing me towards the salad bar in 1977. And that little difference is why I'm on stage today, because I just incorporated it with the rest of what I do. So I have had the really fascinating opportunity to be inside the human body thousands of times and be inside human heart arteries thousands of times by angiography and now more and more by CT scanning, and they really are a beautiful thing. I mean, part of making a decision to be healthy is understanding what good health feels like. I mean, it feels really good as I approach my 61st birthday. Never spent a night in the hospital other than as a resident, never had an operation, and take no prescription drugs. It's really, really good to feel healthy, but it's also good to actually see what healthy looks like because uh, heart disease is sadly a very silent, very quiet, progressive problem, and you can't see it much on the outside. You can see a few little clues on the outside, but not much. Uh, and these are just these beautiful channels. Maybe you know this, there's 50,000 miles of arteries in the body. You know, around the world is 24,000 miles. We can go twice around the world. That's how many arteries we have. You probably know the word, not a very common word, the endothelium, because it's a favorite of Dr. Esselstyn and favorite of the Nobel Prize Committee in 1989 when there was enough science to award three researchers data. But in those arteries, there's like a single layer of wallpaper, one cell thin, that is the endothelium. If you were to take it all out, it would fill seven or eight tennis courts of tissue. Think about how big that is, maybe a high school tennis court you know, complex. It's actually perhaps the biggest uh, organ in the body in terms of its function. Makes that wonderful, wonderful little chemical called nitric oxide and many other helpful and damaging chemicals. I mean, if you had only one thing in life that I'm gonna lead a life that helps my endothelium stay healthy, you'd have great blood pressure, you'd have great brain function, you'd have great heart function, you'd have great sexual function. And what you're doing is actually making your endothelium healthy when you're at this conference and uh, enjoying the excellent food and the education. Just get up and move around a little. I'm a very bad sitter. I don't sit. I think I'm allergic to it. A couple more. Oh, there we go. There's that, uh, those blue arrows pointing to that single layer of cells, the endothelium. We know it's there. It's a little hard to test how healthy the endothelium is. Hopefully I don't see any young children. If a man is able to have a solid sexual response, your endothelium's working to some extent. If your blood pressure is normal, you've probably got a healthy endothelium. But there are blood tests. There are um, some other non-invasive tests that actually Dr. Katz mentioned a bit on his panel last night that he's done studies on, I've done studies on. 
Um, but it's a tricky little thing to see it. So value your arteries, value your endothelium. Uh, just in case you're not an invasive cardiologist, I don't think there's another in the room, but if there is, I welcome you. That's what an angiogram looks like when you've taken good care of your body and maybe also have had good genetics. Beautiful, clean, branching arteries, rushing all the blood you need to any organ in your body. Again, 50,000 miles. But we can mess it up, and genetics can mess it up. We mess it up more than genetics mess it up, though, as we'll talk about. And there's the problem. I mean, these are pathology slides that you're probably not routinely looking at, but that is a cross-section through the artery that previously looked like a big open channel or a big open pipe if you're in the plumbing industry. And you can see now it's all full of stuff except for that little, little narrowing. Um, we're competing with the slot car people and apparently there's an emergency for the uh, Camaro group. Uh, but you can see how small that little opening is. If that artery is going to your leg and you're walking upstairs, your calf is probably going to ache, called claudication or peripheral arterial disease. If that artery is going to your heart, you might get breathless playing tennis or get a little tightness in your chest or flunk a treadmill stress test if there's a reason to do it. If that was going to your carotid artery to your brain, you might have a little visual impairment or speech impairment, a little TIA mini stroke. And if it's going to your pelvis, you might not find any response with amorous activities or even to the famous blue pill. So uh, we do a pretty good job of messing these things up. That's just one more. That is not a happy smile. Uh, that is an artery that used to be wide open. And there's all kinds of things in there. One thing that's not in there, there is no sugar in there. You can't determine under the microscope any sucrose or glucose or fructose. Ribose, uh, there are a lot of cells, white blood cells. You've heard the word inflammation. I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about inflammation in a few minutes. There are a lot of white blood cells, macrophages and mono, uh, monocytes and stuff. There's um, calcium. Some of you are aware there is a CT scan, CAT scan you can do that can tell you if your arteries are aging or not if you don't know that already from a previous heart attack or bypass. It detects the calcium that would be in an artery like that and gives you a gauge to your true age inside. Uh, there actually are crystals. Uh, crystals aren't only uh, salt crystals we might put in the house for better karma. Uh, there are actually somewhat dangerous cholesterol crystals inside these kind of badly diseased arteries. One of the theories is that on the day you convert from being a seemingly healthy person to having a heart attack within a few minutes or an hour of the onset of feeling poorly, these little crystals, these sharp crystals, much like the crystals in a gout toe, if some of you have had gout, know how horrible that is, these little crystals actually can puncture through the lining of that artery and cause a blood clot to finish the horrible act off. Uh, but I do wanna just back up what I just said. There is cholesterol in these plaques. There isn't sugar in these plaques. I'm no fan and I'm not recommending you rush out and go to the restaurant and get all the white sugar packs and take them home as a health move. Don't do that. Uh, but there is cholesterol in the plaque. It's a constant constituent and it wasn't there at one point and it got there. The only way it can get there is from the bloodstream. And therefore, just intuitively, the amount of cholesterol in your blood might relate to the amount of cholesterol plaque you develop. And we'll go through that. Does cholesterol matter was the title. So that's an important concept. 